You know, so I That's think badass. right. So I think what you were saying before, bro, like That's about people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, getting arrested for, for being a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. I think it's because mm -hmm. it actually fucking works. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to The Real Lifestyle. Today, Real Lifestyle about to get a real adjustment. Got to stop by my boy, Dr. Z, see what he got going on. Let's go. Z. What up, what up? What's up, baby? Z. What's up, too, bro? How you doing, man? Excellent, thanks. All right. Thanks. How you doing? Man, I'm doing good on a Monday. Hell yeah, hell yeah. You looking fit, man. Thank you. You, <laughs> you got, got a little something, something. You miss a beat, man. Yeah. Well, if I miss workouts, I at least adjust people all day. Right. So it's like human CrossFit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the show, man. Thank I appreciate you so much. You. I appreciate you having me. I appreciate you for coming, mm -hmm. um, for having us to come by. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we've been brothers for over 10 years, man. Long time. Like, long time. Dang, long Before time. Before the word podcast was popping. Right. Right? Right. Yeah, long right. time. Yeah, man. So, <laughs> tell tell everybody who who who's Dr. Zev. <clears throat> okay. Who are you? So, uh, how about I tell everybody my admission ticket into since I'm a chiropractor, really got me into chiropractic, right. um, and then you know maybe where I'm at now, and we can go from there. Sounds right. good. Sounds good. Uh, so I'm 14. I have a breathing problem. Uh, I go the traditional medical route. They auscultate my lungs. They say, hey, look, based on his age and the way his lungs sound, sounds like he's got asthma. Here's a prescription. Take an inhaler. Mm -hmm. uh, so I took the inhaler. Drugs work. So the inhaler worked, it worked for a short period of time. Um, and then all of a sudden it kind of was losing its punch. So go back to the doctor, the doctor says, all right, this is one type and now here's another type. And I want you to use them, you know, in two different ways, but now I have two inhalers. So I'm using one for sports, we one- two inhalers. Two inhalers. So uh, I start using two inhalers and then what happens is I start getting things like bronchitis and pneumonia, you know, cause inhalers are steroids and they do work. Uh, but now all of a sudden my immune system starts getting run down. I'm getting a lot of coughs, colds, I'm missing school. And then the worst, I mean, forget that I'll live with a cough or cold, yeah. uh, but my skin starts getting bad. So wow. then I get bad skin when I'm trying to date girls and that's not a good thing, <laughs> you know? So that was the stress, <laughs> right, like right. I could live with bronchitis, but the, with the, ladies. Uh, but the side effect and the ladies, that wasn't a good thing. So. Right. Long story short, me and my mom were just sitting down like, you know, families do at the dinner table. And I'm like, man, this is just, I don't know what's happened the last uh, couple months, but we don't really like what transpired. And yeah. I'm like, I'm all of a sudden I go from perfectly fine to now I'm on inhalers. My skin's bad. I'm at the dermatologist. I'm at the standard MD. I'm at all these interns, all this stuff. We're not really going anywhere. You yeah. know, it just seems like we're adding to the list, not subtracting. Um, which is a good point, guys, because when it comes to being healthy, sometimes it's not about adding a bunch of things. It's really about subtracting the garbage. Mm. You know, we were made in a really strong and healthy way, in a pure way. Uh, we just run so much interference, and that's what really was going on with me. Right. Um, so long story short, I ended up in a chiropractor's office. Couldn't even say the word. And by the way, uh, I didn't have any neck pain or back pain. I, like, couldn't breathe. And whenever I tell that story, and I probably tell it over 100 times a day, yeah. uh, sometimes with a little more finesse, sometimes just right to it. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, it really was just one of those things where I was like, I had no idea where my mom was bringing me. Uh, but my mom, a little backstory on that is my mom was previously helped by a chiropractor uh, years earlier. She was hit by a drunk driver. Mm -hmm. And when she was hit by a drunk driver uh, and trying to be super mom, she was wearing a cervical collar like you'll see in an extreme case. Uh, she was on pain pills, sleeping meds, all types of meds, anti-inflammatories, all these different things. Wow. And um, yeah, and still being super mom. And it's to the point where I'm like, I look back now, I'm 39 and I'm like, damn, I think I'm grinding. You know, before you could even document you grinding or caption that you're working. Yeah. I mean, never felt any stress on my mom. But here she was crushing all that, but still consuming all of that, you know. Right. Um, but anyways, so she was helped by a chiropractor. Um, and the chiropractor didn't immediately change her life. It right. wasn't, he wasn't Jesus. It was an Amazon Prime moment. Uh, but slow and steady movement back into the spine first allowed her to have relief. By having relief, she took off the collar. Once she had more range of motion, she started to feel better. She started to feel better. The adjustment started to add just more and more value in other ways to the point where she could sleep good. She mm -hmm. wasn't on pain pills anymore and life got better. Right. So knowing that story, my point is, is that she's like, you know what? It worked for me a long time ago. Let me bring you to the chiropractor. So she brings me to the chiropractor and uh, the chiropractor takes a picture of my spine and I got a big bend in my mid back. And she says, Ev, it looks like mechanically your spine's distorted. It might be interfering with your breathing. You probably have a lot of stiffness in that area. And as she got in and started to actually motion, again, I had no pain. You know, but as she got in on my spine, I was like, ooh, that is sensitive. That is sensitive. Started First adjusting time. me. Dude, Isaiah, I kid you not. I remember to this day 
like I could feel it. The very first adjustment I ever had, I was like, <sighs> the same reaction I see on everyone's face now, Whoa. you know, so I, I, I could breathe. Now, I didn't get off my inhalers that day, but I felt like a, a breath of air that I haven't felt for the first time. And it was way deeper than I'd get on the hit on the steroid, you know? Right. Um, so a couple weeks go by, I'm breathing so good. I don't even think I need one of my inhalers. So I start slowly weaning myself off of that. A couple months go by, I'm totally off all of them. A couple more months go by, I'm off skin meds because you know my skin was racking up. So where do you go to dermatologists? Dermatologists give me every cycling, detricycline, uh, tetracycline. Ev huh? Everything. Everything, you know, that's what they do, you know? So. Um, Either way, got off all that, fell in love with chiropractic, became addicted ever since. And at about 7, 18, I was like, all right, I think this might be something I want to do. My brother was already in chiropractic school. My mom said, you know, we'll go and feel it out. If it feels right for the first year, great. If not, we'll reassess. And literally at the end of the first year, I said, man, holy moly, I was born to do this. I was born wow. to do this. And to this day, no lie, I never get tired. I adjust seven days a week, even though I'm open to the public four, uh, yeah, four. Um, I got my hands on someone's spine seven days a week, where it be a family or a friend. I constantly am talking about it everywhere I go. It's just, it's in my life. There's not a barbecue I don't go to, a dinner table I don't sit at where chiropractic isn't brought up. You know, I was just at, uh, at something this Saturday and it gets brought up. I don't know how it gets brought up. <laughs> I don't know if I'm just exuding it. Yeah. Uh, but my point with just telling you that is, is yeah. I am absolutely in love. It's like my, it's like my side piece. You know, <laughs> um, yeah. and I'm absolutely in love with it, you know, and I never get tired of it, which speaks to also, um, you know, different chiropractors can do it different ways. Just like a chef can go to school to traditionally get taught how to make meals or how to prep a certain, you know, way. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you can branch off and you have like French cuisine and you have all these different cuisines. But the typical training of like how to chop, how to cut, how to food prep, how to do these things in advance, how to serve small groups, how to serve large groups, the basic core training that you get. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that because I'm a foodie, but mm -hmm. it works very similar in training, whether it be medical or chiropractic, is you get your core and this is how you do it. Now, how you want to go out and practice as a clinician mm -hmm. is up to you based on what you read, what you see, or the experiences you have or the people in front of you. Right. Um, but I'm saying that because uh, the more people I serve, the more people I take care of, I used to think like adjusting 50 people would be a lot of people. Like to the average, that's above average. And to if I say, hey, I adjusted 50 people today, you'd be like, geez, that sounds like a lot. So once I got to 50, I realized it would like test my love. Like it would test my endurance. Like, right. you know, if 50 is a lot, and I'm really not all in mentally, physically, and emotionally on this, then 50 would burn you out in a couple months or a year. You'd be like, wow, I don't know if I want to work that hard. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Let me see what other things I can get into to kind of mix this up. But long story short, I got to 50 and I'm like, this ain't nothing. I got to serve more people, you know, like I really love it, you know, like, uh, so then you get a hundred and you go to more and you go more and the more people I serve, it's like that Santa Claus, Santa Claus factor where it's like time slows down and just, I'm able to keep going and going and going and going and going and going. And I don't really know how I do it, but I just do it. And by the way, you know, my adjustments aren't half-assed. I know you, you know, go so all I'm in. not just touching it. I'm not touching one side of the neck and calling it a day. I'm thoroughly going through. Um, I'm a full spine chiropractor. I'm adjusting everything, including extremities, if need be, you know, and I'm just not crack, racking and cracking people to do it. So obviously we're going through, we're motioning, we're checking. So it just means I'm just saying I'm spending yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of energy right. on a lot of people. Um, but I think it's uh, just love, you know, and, um, you know, that's my backstory. You know, that's how that was my taking into chiropractic. And, um, and I still get adjusted, you know, to this day. So it's mm. not like, hey, I stopped getting adjusted when I went to chiropractic school. I actually get adjusted probably more now than ever before. Because the more you get adjusted, uh, the more you realize it starts to influence you in other ways, just like it did with my mom. So in the beginning, you know, her main focus was probably like, yo, I just need to get this collar off. Maybe I just need relief. Mm. But then I'm noticing as I'm getting adjusted, you know, I'm actually handling stress better, so I'm sleeping better. But unless you see it unfold the right way, you know, where you give time to let it unfold, you're not going to see it pay out for you in that way. You know, mm. so now point being is when I'm getting adjusted present day, one day it's for heavy load, you know, between being a dad, then adjusting and then going and working out in the morning. We train, yeah. you know, we're training partners sometimes on Tuesdays, uh, early morning. So, mm -hmm. you know, some days it's for load management, yeah. like, damn, my back, my body's stiff. Yeah. I need that adjustment. I need that movement. But then other days it's like, it's just optimization. You know, I feel like my blood flows better. I feel like my mind works clear. I feel like I don't have the need to get on the floor and do our recovery because I don't have the time, but I don't feel the need. And I'm mm. able to then get into a training, right. work out, and just kind of get right into it. And I think a lot of that speaks 
uh, to the simplicity, which is what I was talking about before. It's like, we don't need a hundred things. Right. Now, nowadays, everyone's seduced. They want 50 different products, 10 different stretches, a hundred different supplements. But at the end of the day, it's like, if you really are truthful, you don't know what's paying out. You don't know what your what movements you're doing, what supplements you're taking. You don't really know. I ask people, hey, you take fish oil? Yeah, I take it. I don't know if it works. You right. take turmeric? Yeah, I don't know if it works. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. We're just peeing probably half of this stuff out. Take them out of the garbage. Yeah, so yeah. I'm just coming from like a place of, look, I know I use my body more, and I would coast on on this, more than any professional athlete in sports that I could think of. I have no off season. I'm physically lifting and doing MMA with clients <laughs> all day long. Yeah. And I'm doing most of the load in a lot of angles. And then in one sense, it's like boxing because, you know, boxers hit that bag right. and hit bodies. Yeah. So you get that that uh, re reciprocation back into your body, right. you know. And here I am adjusting spines and hips and that force just goes through me. So if I look at, okay, I don't even feel like I've peaked yet. I've got a lot of energy. I'm no, nowhere near that. Uh, so I know that's the case. And I right. said, well, what am I doing? I said, well, I get adjusted regularly. I eat good, move my body. You know, just simple things right. pouring into my physical health that I think then pay out in my energy and pay out in other ways, you know? So sorry if that was a tangent, but oh no, um, no. that kind of, I think, encapsulates and, and goes full circle into everything, not just chiropractic, but the lifestyle, which is something that you preach, exactly. you know what I mean? And I just wanted to touch on that because I think that's what's really important because uh, there's a lot of bad lifestyle advices out there and a lot of people are getting paid to produce and talk about things that really don't show up big or don't have real relative value for people. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, people watching uh, should probably look at how, what can I scale back? What can I minimize? What can I get rid of? You know what I mean? And, and what can I fall in love with? What two or three things can I fall in love with that work with my lifestyle mm -hmm. that will pay me out big dividends, not just in the short term, but in the long term? What works you out know? for you? I'm glad you asked, actually, uh, because as I was saying that, I'm like, well, I should probably talk about hanging upside down. Um, because a lot of people always ask me about hanging upside down because, you know, even today I did a, a live for about eight minutes. Uh, not to do the live, but I was just hanging out and I wanted some company, yeah. you know, and I hang upside <laughs> down often, so it was like no big deal for me. Yeah. Um, but hanging upside down is something I've done since I was about 18 years old. Mm -hmm. I didn't get into it because of back pain. I just was always into Once I was in chiropractic school, uh, you know, I started a, you know, in chiropractic school, let me back up. In chiro school, it's a very unique experience because you have all types of people of all walks of life. Um, some have already gone to graduate school and realized that that wasn't for them and something went wrong with their body physically. And then a chiropractor showed up big for them and they said, you know what, I think I want a career change. I think I want to be a chiropractor. So they went from Duke University and they went from all these different major schools and then they shifted on. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, you know, are all into health and fitness. So there's a lot of sexy people on a chiropractic campus. For real? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's an <laughs> inside scoop right there. I just mean there's people sexy physically, yeah. mentally. They're, they're attracted to the things that would be your most ideal. Right, You right. know? Um, so when I was on campus, I was just exposed. Like, people were talking to, you know, everyone was training. Everyone was on their grind. And everyone, a lot of people eat good. Not obviously 100%, but the majority of the people, you know, because chiropractic comes with that. Um, so one of the things I got into was hanging upside down. So I started hanging upside down. I'm like, wow, I actually really like the way this feels. I like the way I breathe. I like the way my body feels. Um, and to this day, I think that's something that people should look at. I think it's an easy thing to do. It doesn't mean, by the way, um, people, whenever I talk to them about one thing, I, I just feel the need to do this. So yeah. excuse me, but uh, people always are like, oh, but what about this or that? And, it, you know, doing one thing doesn't take away from anything else. Right. So I don't want to say because hanging upside down is one of my go to's and my favorite thing. It doesn't mean that stretching your piriformis or your hip flexors or your QL muscle isn't significant or important. It's just what I feel based on my schedule and the amount of time I have. I rather not bring my body through 30 minutes of warm up and movements. I rather take gravity, flip it upside down and use it for me and just elongate my spine, understanding that load and compression on our back and on our joints affects blood supply, drives poor muscle behavior mm -hmm. and creates a cascade of negative stress and responses in our body mm -hmm. that we don't want. So I figure, well, if all things start at the CNS or the majority of them, meaning your central nervous system, right. and the central nervous system is inside the spine and it's controlled and influenced by the discs and the joints and the vertebral column, then I wanna do things to lengthen and decompress that. 
and then mm -hmm. let that spill over. And if I have more time, then get into those things. Does that so make sense? So it makes to sense. me, that's where I'd put a lot of my weight. It doesn't mean that's where everybody has to, but I definitely think people should start to entertain it. Mm -hmm. They should take it for a test drive, even if it's not fully inverted. They should look at taking load off at 60% and 70% and 80% and getting comfortable there for time and breathing and just maybe checking some emails, even watching a movie, do whatever you gotta do mm -hmm. uh, to stay there. But the magic really is in time. It's not in two minutes, it's in a minimum of five minutes and then building off of there. And then time under tension, just like if you wanna grow that arm, by the way, that arm's been that big since he was like 18. <laughs> no, I don't know how long you've known Zay. Uh, but dude, he's been, he's just huge. Um, but either way, if you wanna grow the bicep, it's time under tension. You ask any strength and conditioning coach, time under tension, right? That's right. what grows it. So if we flip that principle on its head, time under, ten time under tension elongating also has a lot of benefits. So you gotta go for time and you gotta get comfortable enough to where you know your head feels good, your ankles feel good, and mm -hmm. things of that nature. I'm not trying to sell inversion tables, I don't own them, uh, maybe I should. <laughs> it's not um, an infomercial. But again, I'm just passionate, and I right. know it's like one of those simple things that will really pay out for a lot of people, you know, even right. if they weren't getting adjusted. It never replaces it, right. I just think it's a great self-hacking home that we could all do. Right. So that's one of my go-tos. So I know you adjust, Possibly. like, yeah. you're just a lot of athletes, and mm -hmm. you're an athlete yourself, like yeah. we train together and stuff like so. that. <laughs> So I know you used to play, used to play sports. Like, yeah. So, you know. so me and sports, um, I sometimes look and it's like I, I know the way I move. Yeah. I know the way I can lift yeah. and the way I could do it over and over again. My second passion outside of chiropractic is definitely fitness. Um, but unfortunately, I just, I don't know what happened. I like missed the sports, but I, I was like, happy I was, to be so, like, so looking back when I look, it's like, cause I don't know, I, I probably blame myself, yeah. you know, because I was, you know, distracted by high school stuff. Yeah. Um, but I also wasn't in a high school that had their stuff together at the time I was there. Mm. So there was a lot of disorganization and then I was still playing sports outside of high school. So like every day when I was done with school, we'd go to the park and ball. We were playing football all the time, basketball all the time. I played a little tennis in school. Um, so, I'll, you know, I could play any sport and I feel like I could play it at a high level mm. and hang with some people. Um, yeah. But I just missed this high school bandwagon, like that bandwagon that would then, you know, put you on a trajectory to maybe college sports and things like that. But yeah. it's crazy because sometimes the way I move my body, yeah. you know, I'm like, I could do, I can hang. I could yeah. legit hang. I yeah. am straight up athletic. At yeah. least I think I am, you know? I mean, when I first I mean, met right? When I yeah. train, I mean, I'm athletic. I no, you, move. you, you, you dare. Like, <laughs> when I first met you, I'm like, man, I, I, I said, dog, I know you mm -hmm. used to play sports, like, at least yeah. fullback or linebacker. Yeah. Like, you, you're yeah. built. Like, you always yeah. been this way for, like, yeah. the last 10 years. Like, yeah. so yeah. if it was not chiropractic, yeah. you was going to be a football player. Yeah, actually, um, yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want to be blessed enough to play ball or, or, <laughs> or football uh, or basketball? Um, you know, I'm only 5'10", yeah. um, but funny enough, I look at like some of these smaller guys in the NBA, even though it's a big man's league, yeah. and I'm like, I would have been a great like 10th man, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> I, was always a well, I was always a great shooter, had great endurance. Um, super athletic. I could have been a great Wes Welker, yeah. you know, in a corner pocket. I feel like I could have done anything. I like to hit. I like to lift. You yeah. know, like I feel like I would have been very versatile. But either way, that's it is what it is. So actually, funny story is uh, before I went to chiropractic school, when I was like still giving my mom a little resistance, um, I wanted to be an entertainer. No, really? Um, yes. So I, <laughs> yes. Talk about uh, so it. <laughs> I was just thinking of my, my, if the camera's looking at me or it caught an <laughs> awkward moment, it's because I was thinking of like, should I share a statement that my mom told me yeah. a while ago? So there's this point when you grow up in Miami, right? In North right. Miami Beach. I grew up in NMB, right? So that mm -hmm. area and Hollywood is where I went to school. So I was 50-50 between Hollywood and NMB. Right. Okay. And um, I was caught in this moment where I'm like, you know what? I love to make people laugh. I don't mind being in front of a camera. I love to entertain. So, yeah. and, I, and I actually did acting for a while too. So I'm like, you know what? I think I might want to be an actor. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did acting too, absolutely. Um, so I'm like, you know what? I think I want to be an actor. Uh, so my mom said, okay, look, you want to be an entertainer? This is what you're going to do. You're going to go to school to be a chiropractor and then you can entertain your patients. <laughs> <laughs> uh, straight up. Just like just that. Just like that, dude. Jeez. Word for word, I'm not skipping a beat. Just um, like that. You know, but look, dude, crazy enough, right? Look full circle. It's like, yeah, uh, I am a chiropractor, um, but just, you know, Instagram coming out, allowing me to kind of do my own thing and show some of my personality even outside of chiropractic. If I wasn't adjusting lots of people every day mm. and I had more time to get in front of the camera, um, I would be there all day long. I'm perfectly comfortable there. Um, I just love to talk about what I'm passionate about. So 
uh, to me, I probably would have went entertainment. But now you look at how my mom was like, you know, and also that's a whole nother thing is like the love of a mother and a parent to kind of push you into something, knowing that that might be your thing. And now I'm a parent. So it's like, oh God, that tears me up. Mm -hmm. Knowing how my mom must have felt going to sleep, knowing that there might have been some, some inner turmoil there. Yeah. But the long vision, she was committed to, hey, my son's future, you know, and this is, I just need to give him that give push, that push right? yeah. uh, and now it's like I am entertaining people you know mm. look at us now yeah. you know what I mean I mean right. hopefully we come up with some good stuff uh, that's applicable uh, right. that people can relate to right. you know that is like they, they good takeaways but at the end of the day between adjusting people maybe some nutritional uh, tips maybe some exercise movements I'm um, at the end of the day it is entertainment so it's funny how you know in hindsight you know, I went to school to be a chiropractor and now indirectly low key, I'm like, you still uh, entertain people. yeah, I'm not, I'm yeah. not an entertainer, but in <laughs> yeah. one way, in my way, yeah. I am entertaining people, you know? Right. Uh, so we'll see, you know, my big vision is I'd like to take this into a major network. Um, that's kind of where my headspace is going now, uh, between social media and all the like algorithms and all the blocking and you know, all the, the facade of stuff that's out there. I just feel like when I sit down and have my coffee in the morning and I'm like, you know, outside of being a chiropractor, I'll never not be a chiropractor. So like, even when I say that, that doesn't mean like I'm getting up, write me a check and let's go. Right. Um, actually, if that was to be the case, I'd tell them I'm never leaving here. You're coming in here. You're going <laughs> to, yeah. you're going to get in where you fit right. in. <laughs> but what I'd like to do is like, you see that pimple popper stuff and you see that stuff, dude, the magic and the moments and the emotion that happens in my office is how we came up with adjustments. Don't lie. Mm. We will see grown ass men tatted, you know, that with piercings in places that you're like, damn, come into the room, get their first adjustment, not their last, but just their first. And they will break down and have like uh, an emotional release dude, where they cry. And really? it's like, yeah. And it's, and I'm not trying to be Dr. Phil or psychologist, yeah. but I'm just saying, you never know being a chiropractor. It comes with all these cool interactions, which probably low key kind of like refuels my battery room to room to room, because I'll see a guy like that and he'll be like, dude, I don't even know what the hell just happened to me. I must've been hanging on to something. I don't know. Um, and it's like a release is a release, dude. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, like it is what it is. How you got there is how you got there. Um, but my point is, is like, there's so much magic that I feel I could capture mm. that I could bring to the world, um, you know, in ways that I don't ever see it being done. There's a lot of people that are chiropractors right. and there's a lot of people that pop on, on different pages and, and channels and stuff. Uh, but a lot of that is about mic'd up adjusting. It's about just appeasing this ASMR crowd. There's people that might like to hear a crack and go, Ooh, you know, I'm trying to tell it from the grit story from from the, 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 the real side of it. The way right. you'd see, like, for example, you, we all know how history's misconstrued and it's told ass backwards, you know? Um, and now you'll see this director, you know, all of a sudden pitch something and put something together on Netflix or Hulu or one of these channels. And then all of a sudden we're like, what, Christopher Columbus was crap? Oh my God, but we're brainwashed in school that he's the man. Right, you know? right, right, right. And we're right. told all these things about everything, Judaism, slavery, Afro, you name it. I don't even, I'm not the guy to talk to about that. I just, from what I hear and see, I'm like, yo, history's whack, dude. We're totally taught all the wrong stuff. Well, what people don't know is there's actually a deep, deep history in chiropractic. Uh, and I have, I have this like need to want to protect it and defend it, uh, knowing that I was in school at a time when things were still transitioning and I actually was around, for example, when I was graduating, I got to sit down at this dinner and sit down with the most jailed chiropractor of all time's wife. Now he had passed, uh, but I got to spend some time with his wife and I got to hear her stories. And I'm like, wow, you know, like when I adjust, yeah, it's fun to hear a release, yeah. but I'm thinking of like, yo, I'm trying to put chiropractic on to where if my son wants to be a chiropractor, you know, that's respect. You know, so when he walks into Starbucks or he walks into a place and he says, ladies and gentlemen, I am a chiropractor. They don't go, oh, my neck, and or a car back. accident, or this <laughs> yeah. and that. I want them to go, yes, right. that's the <laughs> ultimate health and lifestyle strategy. You know what I mean? That God put in our backs, that, our, that whoever created man, and whatever word you want to say, that our spinal column is powerful. You know what I mean? And that for civilization, for centuries, right. people have been looking at how to move spines. You know, that's not a chiropractic thing. Chiropractic didn't come up with adjusting. You know, civilizations have been putting each other in trees and twisting each other's back and pulling on each other's arms and legs. Right. Uh, it's not till around that late 1800s to when we said, okay, we're gonna use the spinous process as a lever to start to adjust. And that's when it became specific. It wasn't just twisting people apart, you know? So I have this kind of low key, kind of under the radar heart that I'm like, you know, I'm trying to guard it, protect it, and then push it at the same time. I don't just wanna appease a crackhead. 
You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that's part of like, when I think about it and I have my coffee in the morning, I'm like, well, where is this gonna go in another 10 years and 15 years? Cause you know, I just don't wanna make adjusting videos. I wanna do, you know, I wanna serve more people. That right. is at my core at everything. Like, I don't wanna die out. I'm gonna do this till I got nubby hands and I wanna figure out how to do it then too. Right, right, right. You know, until the wheels fall off, I'm right. all in on this. Um, it's not a bank account thing for me at all. It, um, it's a passion. Yeah, it is. And I always say that too, anyone, you know, like, for example, I feel like I'm, you know, Michael Jordan's my favorite basketball player, yeah. but you know, for the younger generation, I feel like I'm the LeBron James yeah. at Costco prices. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, dude, I feel like nah, I'm no the best lie. chiropractor hands down on the planet. That's what I believe. Not everyone has to believe it, but that's my belief. Right. And I believe I serve it at a fee that any student one year into college can afford my care. You know what I mean? I never, because of someone I adjust, go, oh no, fee's gonna change now. I remember every time I, I, I adjust someone who's like a well-known name, right? Right, right? I immediately will see something like, oh, fee's going up now. Shit, my <laughs> fee's not going up. In fact, it actually went, I scaled down my fee right. uh, for a long time before I even started to slowly bring it up. And even mm -hmm. to a point now uh, to where it's still touchable by almost every single person I could possibly think of if someone wants my care. You know, so mm -hmm. it'll never really be, it's not, my point of saying that it's not about the bank account. It really is just about like, for example, this guy brought me his mom today. His mom uh, was told, hey, look, you need injections uh, to manage your inflammation and you need to go to a pain management specialist. And shout out to Loaded Up Carl. Uh, Carl was like, hey, I'm gonna bring you to my guy. So his mom coming from Haiti was like, oh, what's, what? what? Yeah, what, what? They don't what? even know what chiropractic yes. is. You know, no. so this is something, by the way though, this is something I do see every day. It just right. was, it's fresh right now. Right. And seeing the mom's look, seeing Carl's look, like, yo, thank you for serving my mom, man. You know, seeing that light go off. Yeah. That's what it's freaking about. Man. So what I want to do is I, my goal would then be my next game plan is either me do it myself or get someone in to kind of get involved into this to where you guys can watch this around the world and fall in love with the way I fall in love with it. And mm -hmm. then most importantly, not just the interactions, uh, but then layer in all the education behind it as too. Because, you know, every time I adjust someone, um, I get hate DMs, mm. I get hate emails, mm. I get stuff, dude. Like, um, I've always said this. So you get um, hate mail. Oh, dude, yeah, hate email, not mail. No, who <laughs> right, like, mails anymore? Well, I right. get lots of bills right. uh, in the mail. <laughs> you get hate um, emails. Dude, I get hate email. Uh, I get hate DMs every week on the week. Now, I get way more, dude, I brought my daughter to see a chiropractor uh, because of you, so thank you. Uh, her ear infections are better, or my mom's range of motion is better because of something I saw you do, so I get a lot of those. But dude, I get so much hatred from just l trolls, from PTs, from MDs, from you name it, neurologists, all of them, all of them talking about this, that, or the other thing. You think they're hating on you, bro? Um, I think some just want to ride a wave. Right. I think some are um, totally misinformed and miseducated right. on what actually is going down. And um, you want me to go deeper in uh, really what it is? I mean, I don't want tell it to me, be boring. No, nah, tell me what it is. You guys want to hear this? You guys, everybody want to hear this? <laughs> Let's do so, it. So, all right. So, first of all, this is my opinion on, on what I feel about, uh, this is healthcare in general, but specific to chiropractic. Uh, people hate on chiropractic the way a white person would hate on a black person if they were growing up in a racist house and not understanding anything other than this, that's what my parents told me. Mm. Now, listen for a second. I know that might sound crazy. Like, what the hell is he talking yeah, about? Yeah. I don't know if professionalism is in the word because racism is the word, prejudice is a word. Right. Uh, professionalism is used in a different context. Yeah. But I'm telling you, every single day I'm in my room and I hear someone say like, my doctor told me not to go. Uh, my doctor, my friend told me not to do that. My friend told me this, my friend told me that. I hear it all day long and I've been hearing it since I was in school and I'm 10 years plus out of school. So the Seriously. reason I say that is even though it's not extreme, I'm not comparing it, I'm just saying from a, like it almost parallels in a sense of how people, when I press them, I'm like, what do you hate about it? What is your doctor? Go back to that doctor. What does he hate about it? What did he read? What did he see? Because I want to read or see it as well. So I could then go, you know what? Cause I'm open, I'm woke, right. you know? So if right. there's something that's off, then I want to be aware of it, you know? Right. Um, and, and every time they get pressed up, it's always like, oh, I don't know. It's just something I heard. You realize it was empty. They don't have the And answers. that's why I say it parallels to like all this hatred that's out there. Mm -hmm. It's like once you press someone up, you realize, shit, I don't even know why I hate them. Like, I don't know. It's just like a mother, father, teacher, preacher. It's something like that's been recycled, but we have no real ideology behind it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, so I kind of feel it in that way. Now getting to a lot of like where there's confusion right. out there with what I do, it's because this is the game is rigged, bro. There's so most doctors out in the field, they're too busy to read 
uh, journals day in and day out. They're either too busy or they're too lazy. I think they're too lazy, not too busy, because they see half the people that I see and get right. paid like fat cats. So they're chilling, right. probably at the Ritz on the beach, you know what I mean, having a drink <laughs> while I'm here breaking my back. And right. I ain't hating on them. Much yeah. love. Just don't hate on me, <laughs> right. you know? Uh, but the reality is, so what they do is, and this is important for everyone to know, that way you guys can all get an understanding of how any doctor, whether it be vaccines, whether it be adjustments, whether it be exercise, nutrition, is it's a common place to read something called a systematic review, okay? Right, right. A systematic review is where they collect X amount of studies in whatever time block they want. You set the parameters. You can say, hey, I'm gonna go to PubMed or this journal. I'm gonna search from 2009 to 2015. Show me every chiropractic study done. And mm -hmm. then what you do is you say, but eliminate this and include this and exclude this, right, right, okay? Right. So then what happens is that's the systematic review. Now mm -hmm. to doctors and people in that world, Systematic reviews carry the majority of the weight. They're heavy hitters, they're mm. big players. So what that means is if I'm a doctor and I wanna say, you know what, I'm hearing a lot about chiropractic, let me go and read a systematic review because I don't have time to read 16. So just right. give me the review of all review, of this. Right. But with the reviewing, when you actually see, I'm, I'm, I'll nerd out real quick and I'll go through every one. So when someone sends me an article and it's on a study that shows a negative light on a chiropractic, I don't just read the study, I'm gonna go into the references. And then I'm gonna look at every one of those references and I'm gonna start Googling, I'm gonna go to every one of those references. And the more you follow it down the rabbit hole, you realize that they excluded the most important stuff and they included the weakest stuff to weaken chiropractic on a systematic review. Mm -hmm. Thereby, when the doctor looks at it, it shows no significant value more than anything than going for a walk around your block in the neighborhood. So wow. then they go, based on what I read, it's ineffective. You see wow. what I mean? Because the game is rigged. You know, they, they can control which ones they bring in and which ones they bring out, you know? So let me ask you. But to add one other thing to that, but not to cut you off, mm -hmm. but if you're open, and you actually go through and spend some time looking, dude, the stats are hands down, the undisputed champion of neuromusculoskeletal health is a chiropractic adjustment. And that's why DO's doing more now than ever, and that's why PT's are jumping on and do it more than ever. Yeah. They could hate, but you know, prior to 2009, unless they were in a, a specific environment, you weren't seeing PT's adjust the way they are. Maybe they did a little anterior, a little bear hug move, right. but now you're seeing them all over the place pop up. Everyone's adjusting, but mm. you were shitting on it. Can I say that? <laughs> you they were it. shitting on it <laughs> since I was in chiropractic school, but now they want to hop on board and be like, oh, we'll give you a little of this and we'll give right. you a little of that. They've taken our language. Mm. They've adopted it and try to implement it any way they want. You know what I mean? And, and trying to say, well, it's good for this, but it's terrible for that. Right. Meanwhile, chiropractic, we've done one thing and one thing only, and that's pimp that out. You know right. what I mean? Because we understood the value of the adjustment. Now, if you go in and you do the research, it's not just, hey, the game is rigged. We'll always need more studies. We'll always need better information. We'll always need more research. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And that's, that's part of life. If you right. look at like in the beginning, uh, chiropractic was studied for back pain. Mm -hmm. But now you look at it and there's big studies on like, forget the back. How does the adjustment affect brain? We right. know that the adjustment stimulates the prefrontal cortex in the brain. Right. I think that's undisputed at this point. If someone goes and looks at the data, you say like, wow, well, why does the adjustment so effective for low back pain? Is it just local changes in the area? Mm -hmm. Or is there some type of reflexive change into the central nervous system that's creating a shift in the body that's driving a different chemical response? Right. You know what I mean? Right. So the more we look at data out there and all these cool things that are being done, shit, by 2050, the studies and the money and everything that's going to be there to fund that stuff is just going to to validate why we've been doing what we're doing. And then I look at people that were thrown in jail for doing what I do every day, and I'm like, yo, I got to show up big for these people, man. I'm not just trying to make a crack video. I'm not just trying to, you know, help one person. Yeah, these people went to jail. I know people they went that went to were, jail for being dude, a chiropractor. Dude, they went to jail for being a chiropractor over and over again. I got images what? of people standing outside jail saying, "Let my chiropractor go." Yeah, wow. because medical doctors were picking up the phone and saying, "Yo." You need to uh, you need to arrest this man. He's practicing medicine without a license. You know what I think it is, dog. You know so. You know. I think um, you know. And because, there's much more to it. But, right, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. when we met, like mm -hmm. I was in, in a fucked up situation. Yeah. Like I couldn't barely walk because yeah. I tore my hamstring. Yeah. And the doctors told me I wouldn't be able to play football again. Right. Um, and you know the story. I remember that. You know. Remember, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then. Um, Abbott I, Allen bringing you right in. I right. remember it was table two in Hollandale. Right. Right in that corner. I remember right where that X-ray box was on that panel. I right. remember. I remember. Man, and mm -hmm. um, bro, I had no insurance. Mm -hmm. I had no money, mm -hmm. no nothing. Mm -hmm. And you took me in, dog. Mm -hmm. And hell yeah. Like you, you had me come in like five days mm -hmm. a week. Mm -hmm. And um, 
We, and let me pause real quick. Go ahead, People go going, oh, that's friggin' absurd. Why would he need to do that? <laughs> because repetition is what works, and that's what the data shows. So right. when there's inflammation in an area, you don't, you know, you've got to give the body time. There's a place for everything. Right. Uh, but at your age, based on what you're seeing, is like you got to get in there and get to work. A yeah. lot of people, especially medically, they're like just sit and rest, sit and rest, sit and rest, sit and rest, bed rest, right? Bed, bed rest. rest. We've all heard bed rest, yeah. bed rest. We now know that's not really the best advice. There's a time for it, of course, uh, but we know that the longer you rest and sit, the more the body walls things off, creates scar tissue, fibrosis, all, the, all these reactions that then set us up for more problems. So right. that's why in the beginning, I was even just for those watching, like, why would he need to go to the chiropractor five times a week or four times a week or whatever? <laughs> right. You know, it's because when you're trying to overcome something in a rapid period of time, right. you know, you want that movement, you right. know, and you want it repeatedly. Right. So, and it yeah. actually worked because I was bed resting. Yeah, did it work? Forget the data. <laughs> did it work? It, it worked because within three months, <laughs> like you Justin, told me, lie. you told me, it says, hey, mm -hmm. within three months, you'll be running mm -hmm. again. Uh -huh. I couldn't even like, do the basic stuff like and walk. were you no i wasn't doing nothing no but in three months in three months bro i was 100 that i don't remember yeah, yeah. in yeah. three months you had nice. me at 100 percent. nice and it'd be and i didn't tell you this but you mm -hmm. probably knew mm -hmm. it was because you mm -hmm. i ended up going to um i did not know that but man that's freaking awesome yeah because wow. if i if yeah. i never went to you my yeah. football career would have been over yeah it's awesome you know so i that's think badass. right so i think what you were saying before bro like that's about People, you know, mm -hmm. uh, getting arrested for, for being a chiropractor, mm -hmm. I think it's because mm -hmm. it actually fucking works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we can go into like big pharma and we can go right. and right. all of that. You know, another thing uh, people should know is uh, when you guys get a second or, you know, don't pause this video, keep watching us. Uh, but afterwards, yeah. after you follow, like, share, and subscribe, by the way, right? Please do that. Bam. Um, <laughs> is Google AMA versus chiropractic. Um, one of the funniest, uh, not funniest actually, sometimes it's a funny reaction, but I'll tell people like when we're ha going back and forth, we'll be like, uh, well, did you know the uh, group of chiropractors took the AMA to court, which is the American Medical Association, the biggest lobbying body for the medical community? Uh, they took them to court and lost. And then the judge told them, hey, if you took this to the Supreme Court, you might win. Uh, so a group of chiropractors uh, take the AMA, the largest lobbying body for medicine, uh, to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled the AMA guilty of mm. what still goes on to this day, but in the 80s, found them guilty for trying to destroy, dismantle, and take apart, and belittle, and create a bad name for chiropractic. Wow. You know, found guilty in the Supreme Court. Go to Google, just Google it. This isn't a Zev thing, you can go right to Google, and you can see the whole thing, the timeline, the judge who ruled and everything. And the thing is, is like, yeah, we can get into, you know, what's all the bad mouth and all of that. People have testified and said that I was told that chiropractic was witchcraft, that it was cults, that it was this, that, and the other thing. You know, um, you know, and that's, uh, you know, that's sad. But you well, look at like if, a, if an MD graduated 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and that's what he was told as a student, and he looks up to his, his teachers, you know what I mean? And then that's what they're telling them. Well, what are you breeding? Right. You see how I say it parallels with like racism and right. prejudice right. and all these different things? Because right. in one sense, it's very similar. Like obviously yeah. it's not as destructive, you know, to a profession it is, uh, not to the people or a population, um, but still it parallels this whole pass down thing, you know? And then I have to clean up the mess every day. You know what I mean? I have mm. to show someone that no, it's not bad guys. You know what I mean? This is excellent. This yeah. is good for you. Yeah. You know, um, and let me show you why, you yeah. know, and right. uh, sometimes I got to love people through it. Sometimes, by the way, it's not beauty. I have a thing. I just told Alexis today. I'm like, I want this on every corner of every wall. I'm not Jesus. And this ain't Amazon Prime. <laughs> All healing takes time. And that's probably one of the most important things I could tell you is wow. slow down, have some freaking patience, do the right thing, do it over and over again, let it compound and you will see amazing changes, whether it be through the way you move your body and exercise, through chiropractic care and your spine. Because when I say chiropractic, I'm really talking about spine care, you know, because that's what chiropractors do is we're taking care of the spine. So the reason I like to point that out is because if we look at dental care, right? We don't say, oh, that dental hygiene stuff's crap. I don't need to brush my teeth that often. That's something that ten Dennis came up with. No, right. it's actually the exact opposite. We, people were losing their teeth. They were ripping them out. And they said, what happens if we just started to take care of them a little bit better? Maybe we can keep them, right. you know? Right. So that became the first thing, right? It's like, hey, let's dental hygiene. Let's brush our teeth. Let's actually take care of these bones. Right. Right. Oh, what a freaking idea. But now check this out, right? Let me go one step further with it. Now we know that it's not just about minimizing cavities or tooth pains, right. but we know that actually dental health spills over into our overall health. You could have bad teeth and it could create heart disease. 
We know that leaking mercury in teeth and bad teeth create cancers. They accelerate breast cancers. I think that's well known at this point. You right. know what I mean? And how, how it affects through the lymphatics and weakens the immune system and creates a lot of stress in the body. So it became from, I don't care about my teeth to let's take care of teeth because we want to avoid cavities to now, oh my God, do we brush our teeth because I want to avoid cavities or do I brush my teeth because I don't ever want my bad teeth to be a blind spot in my health, right? right. Or to create heart disease, right? Right. right? You, well, think about it. I'd like to have the same thing happen for chiropractic because we don't talk about like, you know, teeth care. You talk about dental hygiene. You give it a nice name, right? So, you know, getting adjusted is spinal hygiene. It's upkeep on your discs, bones, and joints. And most importantly, we'll use posture, you know, because bad posture compounded every day right. is spinal degeneration in a nutshell. Right. You know, so we know that the spine and joints influence posture. It's not just exercise, you know, um, one of my favorite sayings by Alvin, uh, AK, Alvin Kamara, <laughs> is muscle ain't shit without the bone. Right. You know, um, it's one of my new sayings. I like that. You know, so it's true. It's not just a muscle thing. It's both. It's bi-directional. So I'd like to have people go from, okay, maybe I should take care of my back even if I don't have back pain. It sounds like mm -hmm. it's an important thing to do. It might make me feel even better, mm -hmm. right? We all want to be at least 10% better. Exactly. You know, like me and him are going to go train hopefully tomorrow if we could wake up, yeah. right? So I feel good, yeah. but I want to feel better. <laughs> right. I want to go train, you know, so that's what we do. But my point is, is like, now I want to take it to, yeah, I want to take care of my back because 10 years from now, I want to be super dad and I don't want to be the guy broken down. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just treat it when it happens. I want this to be a part of my what? Lifestyle, lifestyle, man. lifestyle, you know, and that's what it's all about, whether yeah. it be athlete, whether it be me being the chiropractor, you know, we're all in our own lane preaching, you know, our own thing. But if you look at it, if you just step outside, you realize we're all saying the same stuff in a different way. That's it. You know, you're preaching one thing in a different way, yeah. um, you know, and uh, and so am I. But it all is all the same thing.